Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing good. Today, we will study about the action potential, excitability of a nerve cell and voltage gated channels. So let's start with the basic structure of a nerve cell. This is the structure of a nerve cell which I am sure most of us have seen many a times. Discussing the parts, we come to these branches called as dendrites. This is the cell body. This is the nucleus of the nerve cell. This hole is the axon of the nerve cell. Through its length the nerve impulse travels. This is the myelin sheath. It is an insulating layer covering the nerve cell. These are Schwann cells that produce the myelin sheath. These are the gaps in the axon called as node of Ranvier. They are there for fast generation of the nerve impulse. Lastly, this is the axon terminal. Before proceeding further, let's understand the meaning of some basic terms. First is the excitability. It is the property of the living cell to respond to a change in environment. Next we have is the stimulus. It is a change in the environment that results in the response from the cell. Action potential. It is the electrical response of the membrane to a threshold or greater than the threshold stimulus. And threshold stimulus is minimum stimulus that needs to be there for generating a response. Now let's proceed further and discuss action potential. The action potential begins with a sudden change from the normal resting negative membrane potential to a positive potential and ends with an almost equally rapid change back to the negative potential. The duration of the action potential is 0.3 milliseconds. After the action potential is generated, there are successive stages of action potential. First is the resting stage. Second is the depolarization stage. And third is the repolarization stage. Let's discuss each of these stages in detail. First we take the resting phase. This is the resting membrane potential before the action potential begins. The membrane is said to be polarized during this stage because of negative 70 to negative 90 millivolts membrane potential. Let's take the graph of membrane potential versus time. We'll complete the graph as we proceed further in the video. So this is the resting stage where the potential is negative 70 millivolts. Coming to the next stage, it is the depolarization stage. In this stage, the membrane suddenly becomes permeable to sodium ions, allowing tremendous numbers of positively charged sodium ions to diffuse in the interior of the axon. The normal polarized state that is negative 70 to negative 90 millivolts is immediately neutralized by inflowing positively charged sodium ion. The potential rises rapidly in the positive direction. This process is called as depolarization. In case of large nerve fibers, when the excess of positively charged sodium ions enter the membrane, it causes the membrane potential to overshoot beyond the zero level and become somewhat positive. In case of small nerve fibers, the potential merely approaches the zero level and does not overshoot to positive state. Coming back to the graph, this is the depolarization stage where the potential starts to go in positive direction. When the potential goes above the zero, it is called as an overshoot. Coming to the third stage that is the repolarization stage. In this stage, within a few ten thousands of a second, after the membrane becomes highly permeable to sodium ions, the sodium channels begin to close and the potassium channels open to a greater extent than normal. Then rapid diffusion of potassium ions starts to the exterior of the membrane that re-establishes the normal negative resting membrane potential and this process is called as repolarization. 
Back to the graph, we see this lowering membrane potential towards the negative is the repolarization stage. Also, there is another stage called as hyperpolarization. This is the stage when the membrane potential is even more negative at rest. This completes our graph. Now, let's see the pictorial representation of the stages. This is the depolarization stage. As you can see, there are sodium ions outside the cell membrane which travels through the sodium channels making the potential positive. This is the repolarization stage. This is the time when the potassium ions leave to the exterior of the cell through the potassium channels making the potential back to negative. Coming to the voltage gated sodium and potassium channels. Factor that is important for depolarization and repolarization of the nerve membrane during action potential is the voltage gated sodium channel. This channel has two gates, the activation gate and the inactivation gate. Let's have a look at these channels. This is the voltage gated sodium channel. First is the resting stage when the activation gates are closed. As you can see this is the activation gate and this is the inactivation gate. The potential is negative 70 to negative 90 millivolts. Then comes the activated state where the activation gate opens and sodium ions enter into the interior of the cell. There is one thing to remember here that there is a selectivity filter present which allows the entry of specific ions. Then comes the inactivated stage where the activation gate closes for the repolarization to start. So these are voltage gated potassium channels. The gate is closed at the resting stage. Then for repolarization stage also called as slow activation stage potential changes from positive back to the normal resting membrane potential by diffusion of potassium ions outside. One more thing to remember and not to confuse is the voltage gated channels are present in addition to sodium potassium pumps in the membrane. We will discuss the sodium potassium pumps in the next video. So that is it for today guys. I hope you understood today's topic. For any queries you can write them down in the comment section. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and see you guys in the next one.